109 people, including Kobe Bryant. Newly surfaced video taken not long before the crash appears to show the aircraft in mid-flight before it ran into very serious trouble. Our transportation correspondent, that's Chris Van Cleef. Listen to what they say, folks. Chris, it's so hard to look at this video. What are investigators learning? Miguel, good morning. The real hard work of this investigation really just beginning. We do know the helicopter did not have a terrain avoidance warning system. It was a top-of-the-line helicopter. Why didn't it, it does have a that? More challenging for investigators. They have recovered an iPad that may have belonged to the pilot and a cell phone at the scene. They are going to go through those. They also found maintenance records from the helicopter in the wreckage. Those are being analyzed. But the big question, why did the helicopter fall from the sky? Because of the pilot or it was tampered with? Minutes from disaster. New cell phone video appears to show Kobe Bryant's helicopter circling near Burbank Airport before the crash. Tuesday, the NTSB used a helicopter to airlift the wreckage off the hillside. Listen the to this closely. Listen to it. Recovered and four have been positively identified, including Kobe Bryant. This was a high energy impact crash. About 35 minutes after takeoff, with the weather deteriorating, pilot Aro Zabayan asked controllers to track him on he was flying too low four minutes later he radioed he was going to go above the layer of clouds when he didn't have permission to go above the layer of clouds flying in potentially blinding fog he reached 2300 feet in its final 12 seconds of flight the helicopter banked left and abruptly descended falling at up to 5,000 feet there you go so if he was going up to raise himself out of the cloud coverage why all of a sudden bank and then descend at high speed until you hit the ground. That's the pilot doing that. Or the helicopter blades must have been tampered with and the helicopter started to fall, period. He was raising to get out of the clouds. In its final 12 seconds of flight, and then the final 12 seconds, helicopter bank left. he banks left and abruptly descended. And abruptly, that's like, like that, abruptly descends. Falling at up to 5,000 5, feet per minute. Falling at 5,000 feet per minute. speed, about 184 miles per hour. 184 miles an hour, he goes into the mountainside or the ground. Do you have a sense if the helicopter came down all in one piece, or is there evidence that it perhaps okay. broke up? Okay, that part's irrelevant. Listen. This is the flight path of the helicopter carrying Kobe Bryant. There was no mayday. He didn't give a mayday before crashing. It's a common route, spanning an area well-traveled by aircraft every day. So we wanted to understand how, despite this, such an accident could occur. Using a chartered helicopter, flight tracking data, and images from the day, we've retraced the flight path to examine the conditions that may have led to the crash. The helicopter took off from John Wayne Airport in Orange County. Its destination, another airport, near the sports academy which Bryant owned. The first half of the flight is uneventful. The terrain here in the Los Angeles basin is flat. That makes it relatively easy to navigate, even in overcast weather. Bryant himself made the trip routinely. On the day of the crash, the weather in this area is fine. There's four miles visibility. Within 13 minutes, the helicopter passes by downtown Los Angeles, passes Dodger Stadium, and begins to enter the San Fernando Valley. The terrain begins to rise. That day, air controllers tell Bryant's pilot to stay in a holding pattern over the city of Glendale. Hold on, Burbank class Charlie airspace. I have an aircraft going around. They circle for more than 10 minutes as other air traffic is cleared. It's around this time that a retired pilot on the ground happens to film the helicopter overhead. We can see in the footage that the sky is considerably overcast. The pilot receives special clearance to continue on in the low visibility weather. Copy that, and maintain visibility of fire up to two acres. And flies into the San Fernando Valley, following the freeway system along the edge of the foothills. We can see the densely populated terrain is still low and flat. The weather for our chartered flight is clear. But images from the day of Brian's flight show that visibility has become extremely limited. One reason, if we pause and pull up, we can see that the Pacific Ocean is just on the other side of these hills. Cold, moist air coming off the water 
and hitting the mountains can quickly form thick and low cloud cover. With a lower ceiling and higher mountainous terrain, there's now a much smaller path to safely fly. Roughly three minutes before the crash, the helicopter begins flying along Highway 101. It's a common route. The highway is a distinct landmark that's easy to follow, and it runs through a low point in the foothills, making it easier for pilots to stay below cloud cover. Brian's pilot had requested flight following, where controllers track an aircraft to help the pilot during rough conditions. Just before the crash, the ground controller tells the pilot he's too low for tracking. You too, Echo. Actually, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. And the pilot that... radios that he's climbing to avoid the cloud layer. The helicopter quickly gains altitude. At about 2,300 feet, it turns away from Highway 101. And crashes and speeds into the side of the ground or the mountain. Why? One and crashes into the side of a hill. Why does he do that? The debris field is around 500 feet long. Investigators said that the helicopter may have missed clearing the top of the hill by 20 to 30 feet. But he still would have been screwed. So my thing is, one, why didn't he give a mayday that he was crashing? Two, why didn't he respond when they told him he was too low and, and veering off path? Three, why didn't he change the the uh, helicopter's flight? Look at him. And if you listen to the pilot, he sounds like he's different. Like the first response he gives, he sounds one way. And then the second time he responds, he sounds like Arab or something. He said, we'll the hold. The orbited for 15 minutes before getting cleared through the Burbank and Van Nuys airspace. Check for your transition camera. So now listen to his voice. You know, did you just want to follow the 118? 118, I'm not looking for enough Van Nuys to catch the 101. The two Roger. The Skorsky follows the 118 and the 101 freeway is at 1,400 feet. The pilot says he's in VFR conditions, and then once past Van Nuys, he calls SoCal Approach for flight following. You're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following. But... You're still too low for flight following. Um, the helicopter is below radar coverage. He fo follows the 101 through a canyon and then makes a turn to the south. Why does he make a turn to the south and be going through canyons and all that? The aircraft climbs and then according he climbs, to the he climbs and then he crashes. He climbs and then he descends and crashes. What caused him to descend and crash at a high speed? If it's thick clouds, you hover above them. You raise up out of them and you hover above them. You don't go off the view, off the flight view anyway of what you can see, which was the highway. Number one, number two, you don't descend at all, period, at a rapid speed like that into the ground or into a mountain. Descends at more than 2,000 feet per minute. Area residents say he, it was very far. He, he had to descend that helicopter like that. He was the controller of the helicopter. He had to descend it like that. Good evening. It's great to start another week with all of you at home. And we begin tonight with new reporting here after the awful news that basketball legend Kobe Bryant. So basically, what I'm saying is either the helicopter was tampered with or the helicopter pilot crashed on purpose for whatever reason. No one survived. We have learned the helicopter was flying in fog that had grounded other helicopters. The sheriff's department was not flying. Tonight, the audio and the moment the helicopter goes off radar. The NTSB and FBI are on the scene tonight, and ABC's chief national affairs correspondent, Tom Yamas, leads us off tonight from California. Tonight, the NTSB, with help from the FBI, combing the scene of that deadly helicopter crash.
that killed NBA superstar Kobe Bryant, his 13-year-old daughter Gianna, and seven other people. The weather Sunday morning, bad enough that police departments did not fly their own helicopters, but Bryant's took off in heavy fog. How thick was that fog? It was thick. Imagine jumping into a pool filled with milk and opening your eyes. Scott Dalen witnessed the crash. You can hear the helicopter and you, you can't can see anything. anything. I can't see anything. Hearing the helicopter, all of a sudden the helicopters immediately above me. I can hear it, but I can't see it. Tonight, we're learning the identity of the pilot, Ara Zobayan, who, according to the company that trained him, had been flying for 20 years. According to authorities, Brian's chopper departs Orange County for Thousand Oaks at 9.06 a.m., heading to his daughter's basketball game. At 9.20, the aircraft circles near Burbank in a holding pattern. He's been holding for about 15 minutes. At 9.44, eyewitnesses report hearing a helicopter flying very low. Air traffic controllers inform the pilot they can't detect him on radar. Two echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level. At that point, why doesn't he raise up uh, for, uh, and stay up? Data shows that seconds prior to impact, the aircraft rapidly accelerated, slamming into a canyon. Seconds before impact, he did what? Still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. Data shows that seconds prior to impact, the aircraft rapidly accelerated, slamming into a canyon near Calabasas at 9.40. He rapidly accelerated into a canyon. 5 a.m. We're looking for photos. It's, uh, it's not rocket science, people. <laughs> that man crashed that chopper into the side of a damn canyon. <laughs> here, this guy tries to explain it to y'all. So here the air traffic controller is telling him what other traffic... Who is an expert. ...and describing to him um, traffic that he may see and that needs to be avoided. And then... The pilot acknowledges that trans transmission. November 2 Echo X ray, and for your planning purposes, you can expect to transition to the north side of the airport. I just spoke with Van Eyes on the line, and they've got multiple IFR departures coming off of runway 16. Kobe's helicopter is in the green Van Nuys Airport. You can see Hollywood Burbank Airport. You can see they're telling the pilot to go around both those airports. So you can expect to follow the five north and cross and what he, And what he can expect to follow. Okay, so the air traffic controller is assuming that the pilot is in visual conditions and can see the interstate, the 5 North. And he's again describing the air traffic in the area and telling him how he's going to avoid that traffic by following the 5 North to the north side of the Burbank Airport and the Van Nuys Airport. 317 Papa Burbank Tower, you can expect a few minutes. I got a uh, special VFR helicopter. I need to get transitioning. He's been holding for about 15 minutes. Uh, northwest, follow the 5 freeway. Maintain special VFR. I have some special VFR conditions. I have about 2,500. Okay, special VFR. I have about 2,500. I'll fly south to that question. Number two, I go actually, Roger, and you're clear to do for my class, Charlie Surf's area from the southeast to the northwest. Copy that. I can't special VFR. Copy that to that question. So that is the uh, Burbank controller telling uh, the helicopter, again, to follow the Interstate 5 North, north of the airport, uh, and to maintain visual conditions, special visual conditions, not instrument conditions. Right? So he's not authorized to fly into clouds at that point. You heard that? He's not authorized to fly into clouds. But yet everything else we've heard says that he raised up above the clouds to get out of the fog. But he wasn't uh, and to allowed to do that. Conditions, special visual conditions. He raised up above the clouds so that he could then bank hard and accelerate into the fucking mountain valley side and kill them. Not instrument conditions. Right? So he's not authorized to fly into clouds at that point. But special VFR is a little bit different than regular VFR. There are a little bit, there are different rules, but it's still visual. So he's got to be able to see outside. He can't fly into clouds. Uh, he has to maintain certain distances from the clouds. And as you just heard, he was instructed to follow the freeway. So he's got to be able to see the ground. So he's got to be able to see the ground. So at this point, 
The pilot's claiming he can see the ground. Trick for your transition camera, Rio. Did you just want to follow the 118? 118, I thought we were looking for outside eyes to catch the 101 to Your 2 at the Roger. All right, so here again, more highways in Southern California. The 118, the 101, and the helicopter, uh, the instructions from air traffic control in the controlled airspace are to follow those, and the helicopter's acknowledging that he can see and follow those. All right, so here... So he's acknowledging he can see and follow those. Uh, the Burbank controller gave uh, Kobe's helicopter instructions to follow, again, to follow the interstate so that he's got to be able to see it in visual condition. This guy is trying to cover up for the pilot. Conditions, and he changed his frequency. In other words, he told him to talk to the next controller and he terminated radar service. So that means he, he's outside of the controlled airspace for the Burbank airport. He's going to go talk to the controller in the Van Nuys airport, the next town over that has an airport. And um, he's going to maintain visual conditions and follow the highway. Okay, so why didn't he do that? And then he says, and then we stay on the 118. We're currently on 1400 and we have 0235 is what Kobe's pilot is telling them. Did you want to talk to SoCal once you cleared the Van Nuys area? He says affirmative. Yes, I do want to talk to them. Okay, there's a lot going on there, but he's talking to the next controller at Van Nuys. She's giving him the weather. She's telling him where the ceilings are. Uh, she's telling so he's knowing where the... He knows at this point how the weather is because she's telling him. She's telling him the ceilings, which is how high he can go and how low... And to maintain that special visual and telling him to maintain the special visual condition, condition and, that he sees and to let her know when he is out of the special visual condition and into visual conditions completely now he's not authorized to and to let her know go into instrument conditions he's not authorized to go into the clouds in other words he's got to maintain the special vfr the special clearance uh, again, she's telling him to follow the highway, so he's got to be able to see that highway visually. And she's asking him, um, do you want to talk to the next controller? Because once he leaves controlled airspace, he's not required to talk to the next controller. But he said he did want to. But he says, yes, I do want to talk to the next controller when I'm out. And she's done told him at this point everything he needs to know. Outside of the restricted uh, controlled airspace. Now he's talking about he's turning to the southwest for the 101. That was not mentioned at all earlier. Why are you turning at all to the southwest to go to the 101 when she just told you to maintain visual of the highway that you could see already and what the weather conditions was and what the ceiling was? And he said VFR conditions he could see. That's what that means. Contact SoCal now. So here he wants to, yes, he wants to turn to the south and follow the other highway. And Why? I don't know. Specifically, are you in visual conditions? And he says specifically, yes, I am. He's still telling him he's in visual conditions. Yes, yeah, so he wants to turn to the south and follow the other highway. 
And the controller asks him specifically, are you in visual conditions? And he says specifically, yes, I am. Okay. She says, very good. Talk to the next controller at SoCal, Southern Cal Approach, and she gives him the frequency to call that controller. Okay. And so he's going to switch frequencies, and then he's going to call the SoCal controller next. And oh, talk to him. okay. And this is the last controller he's going to talk to. Why? So here we're only hearing half of the conversation. He's lying here as well. Uh, we're hearing the SoCal controller acknowledge the transmission from Cody's helicopter. He's saying, he's giving the call sign, uh, Echo X-ray ident, and he's saying, show me where you are on radar. There's a button in the cockpit that the pilot can push that makes the radar hit kind of bloom and, 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 and gives a signal. To but he doesn't hit the button inside the cockpit when the man asked him to to show him what's up you are on radar there's a button in the cockpit that the pilot can push that makes the radar hit kind of bloom and, and, and he didn't and press it gives a signal to the controller it's not uh, unusual that we're not able to hear the pilot because that's the a lie and so cow approach at this point now, the pilot has decided what he's going to do, which is crash Kobe's helicopter and kill everybody. As receivers, like microphones, all over the place, so that the transmissions to... And he's not responding at this point anymore to air traffic control. Controller are seamless. Is so what I'm telling y'all. There's interference, there's, there's microphones for, on that radio frequency where the pilots can talk to the controllers without interruption. But the microphone recording this was not able to hear the pilot. Why? So the controller can hear the pilot. But the, the, the pilot is not talking to the controller at all. He stopped. The uh, recording for this video could not hear the pilot. Why? So it could hear it all the way up to this point. So why can't it hear him now? Why can't the recording for this video hear him now? It could hear him all the way up to this point. That man's lying. The pilot isn't talking to air traffic control anymore. He's ignoring them. And people may make the mistake of thinking that the pilot either wasn't talking to that controller. He wasn't. Or that there was an interference or that he was too low and shouldn't have been there. Okay. Um, that's not necessarily. Because if he was, we would hear it just like we've been hearing it leading up to this point. Really true. It's just that the microphone that was recording this transmission couldn't hear the pilot. Did that, does that make sense to y'all? But the pilot or the, was definitely talking to the controller. No, he wasn't. The controller wasn't. could definitely hear the pilot because you can hear the controller's end of the, of the conversation. Yeah, but listen to what the controller's saying at the end of their conversation that we're supposedly not able to hear on the other end of from the pilot. It's like hearing only half of a phone call. Right? Okay. And recording only half of a phone call. On this recording, only half of the phone call was there. Okay. But the other half was definitely happening because okay. the controller was talking to him. Okay. Okay. Until a certain point, obviously. In the but what I'm telling y'all is just because the controller was talking to the pilot doesn't mean the pilot was talking back. He's trying to say that the pilot had to be talking back or the controller wouldn't be talking to the pilot in the first place. But listen to what the controller is telling the pilot and asking the pilot. That lets you know the pilot wasn't talking back. He's when he doesn't respond. Fire tree, you got your phone on twelve hundred. So air traffic control is telling him, yeah, you're following a one two hundred code. So you're requesting flight following? So he doesn't respond. And you can't hear the other half of the conversation. He's saying you can't hear the other half of the conversation, but we've been able to hear the whole conversation earlier leading up to this. But he's talking to Kobe's helicopter. The air traffic controller is talking to Kobe's helicopter. And he's saying, here's the code I have for you, 1200. That's a general visual code. And he's asking, do you want flight following? What do you want me to do, in other words? What are you asking for? And we can only hear the controllers half of that conversation. That's a lie. 
Now he says, helicopter 72 EX, that's Kobe's helicopter. Where? Say intentions. Where? Say intentions. If the pilot has been responding to him, why is he saying where? Say intentions. Say intentions. I'm asking you a question. He's not responding. So again, only the controller's half of the conversation, and he's saying the same intentions. In other words, where are you going? What are you doing? How where are you, you going? Time? What are you doing? How are you going to get there? And presumably, the pilot responded with his intentions. No. Presumably, the pilot responded with his intentions. Presumably, he didn't. He was going to Thousand Oaks. Uh, but again, we're only hearing half of for the conversation. And you want to know how you know he didn't respond? Is because air traffic controller saying you're still too low level for flight following at this time. You're still too low. Why is he still too low? Because he's ignoring them from what they've already previously told him. The lady already told him a minute ago the weather conditions, what they were like, what the ceiling was like, told him to maintain visual on the highway. He stopped responding from that point up until this point. He still hasn't said anything. They're telling him you're too low for flight following at this time, sir. And there's the green dot on the screen letting you know the helicopter's still in on the blip. So he hasn't crashed yet. So why the fuck isn't he saying anything back? And if he was saying something back like this guy is explaining to us, then why isn't he raising the helicopter up at this time? Because he's telling him you're too low. Hey, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. Okay, so and then the helicopter, he... it's apparent to me, ask for flight following. Ask for the controller to help him out and keep him clear of other traffic and keep it up. Okay, if that's the case, why did he raise up at that point and crash and accelerate into a damn mile, into a damn mountainside abruptly? Um, but he was too low for uh, the controllers have rules on when he they was too low. They can do that, and when they can issue flight following, when they can give those instructions. He was. He was given the instructions. You had just heard him. Too low for that at that point. See, he's trying to, right now, he's trying to come up with a lie for the pilot. So the pilot don't look bad. Look at his face when he's talking. Look. Issue flight following when they can give those instructions. Watch him. Look. He was too low for that. Look, watch. Point. And that's all we know from that transmission. That's a lie. He was too low for flight following, but he didn't tell him that he was too low to the ground, that he was. Why would he need to tell him he's too low to the ground? He didn't tell him anything else, just that you're too low for flight following. So if, you, if, if you've got over 80,000 hours under your belt of flight experience, like they've been saying his pilot had, if somebody tells you, sir, you're too low for flight following, do you have to tell me that I'm too low to the ground? Hell no, nah, I'm going to know that because you're telling me I'm too low for flight following. And on top of it, the man's not responding to the fucking air traffic control. We can't surmise anything other than that from that half of the conversation. At what point do we see that, that rapid descent? At so, what point do we see the rapid descent, this guy asked? You're not going to be able to see it on... Why is there a rapid descent at all when the man just said, you're too low for flight following? If you're too low for flight following, are you going to rapidly descend lower at a higher speed? No. But it's been reported For what? That the, That's telling the, you I'm finna crash your ass. Hits, um, what? Come about every six seconds, ten times a minute. So what you would see is an, an altitude, and then six seconds later, a much lower altitude, and then six seconds later, a much lower altitude. Uh, All y'all need to know is they told that man you're too low for flight following. As soon as they said that, he accelerated lower, faster into the damn cliff um, depending on how many hits it was for for what you would see i don't that. know it may have only been for one or two hits six or twelve seconds yeah. it don't make no sense down significantly um but i don't have that information on this recording but of course you the, don't uh, controller is saying that you're too low at that point you're, you're too low already 
dropped significantly, right? Not necessarily. You have to know See? the controller's rules for flight following. Wow. Right? He could have been at the same altitude he was at before. He's just too low for a flight following. So Which means drop. don't accelerate lower until you hit the damn ground. Any conclusions from that except exactly what the, the controller said. You're too, you're too low for flight following. Right? And, and he said he could see. He said he could see. He said he had visuals. What he told the air traffic control. I have visual on the 108. I can see the highway. I'm requesting to turn off of it to the 101. He turns off to the 101. Then they tell him you're too low for flight following. It means you're too low to the fucking ground. So why are you going to then accelerate into the fucking ground? Just at, like abruptly, just boom, boom, into the fucking, and then right before you hit the cliff, you accelerate even more, they said.